Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Think of this video as kind of a drag race between two platforms. One is an exquisite supercar with all the bells and whistles, and the other one is a scrappy little nugget with a giant turbo and lots of boost. In other words, we've built two systems to come to some kind of conclusions about which platform will suit you better if you choose between a desktop platform and a workstation platform for content creation, but more specifically, video editing. Now, if I'm gonna be honest, this is a little bit of a selfish endeavor because I personally wanted to know which direction I should choose for building myself my own new editing PC. And with that said, this video might help you if this is something that you're looking at doing yourself. I was pretty excited about all this and I'm hoping some of that excitement could kind of make it its way into this video and maybe it's something that you guys are gonna find interesting, but let's see. Speaking of, there's lots of data to unpack in this video and there's chapters in all of our videos. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also guys, please make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. All of these Puget Bench results are linked in the description as well. So if you want and you wanna come to your own conclusions, you can check out all the raw data from those benchmarks in those links. Now, I'm gonna explain how we formatted all this data as well as we go. So make sure you're actually listening to what's being said. Otherwise, it's just not gonna make sense to you, especially if you're not watching this for content creation purposes and you just wanna know how it works. If you've been following this mini series, you'd know that the first 12th gen system that we built was using the MSI Z690 Unifier. Now, we had a few limiting factors, mainly no power delivery for the iGPU. And since filming that first part, we swapped the motherboard out to one that does support the iGPU. And this is what we found. Now, this graph is basically just to show you those quick differences because we only ran one benchmark. And this graph is divided by colors and there's a legend at the bottom of all the graphs in the whole video to explain all the differences. The overall score here is also divided by 10 to make all of this data fit in a single graph. But you can see that the iGPU system absolutely smashed the no iGPU system. But what really surprised me was the live playback metric here. It's more than double the performance of a no iGPU system. This really shows the strengths of Intel's QuickSync technology. This is not sponsored by Intel. Now, this is the only benchmark that we ran on this no iGPU system. So let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. Overall Premiere Pro performance. Now this graph is not divided by 10. These are the whole numbers and surprisingly, the 12900K with iGPU system is the fastest out of the lineup and my current system, which is a 3970X, which is a Threadripper with a 3090 is beginning to show its age a little. Although my main editing system is significantly undervolted to reduce the heat output. That's mainly a quality of life thing for me personally because I don't want my office heating up too much and this is actually something that won't be as unmanageable with Threadripper Pro. Now I did notice that the 3090 Ti here makes these tasks notably faster than the 3090, which is actually pretty interesting in its own. Now, if we drill into the specifics per system, you can use the key at the bottom to understand the data here. And the only real metric where the 12900K and iGPU system is faster other than the Threadripper Pro is in playback performance. Remember, this is a CAN benchmark and the codecs and formats used in Puget Bench are not the codecs that we shoot in. We shoot exclusively in Blackmagic RAW. Blackmagic RAW loves lots of RAM, so playback performance won't be too different from what we're already used to. It also really loves fast GPUs, so I don't see it changing too much now. Check out all the raw data in the links in the description to take a closer look at all of this. The most important metric to me personally is the export time and the Threadripper Pro system here is the fastest so it's got the quickest export time so already that's looking like a good sign. Now let's take a look at After Effects. Now I've broken this down into two separate group metrics to help better understand what all this data means. Firstly, we have the overall performance and the multi-core performance. This actually shows quite a bit of disparity with After Effects as a bit of software. If we look at the Threadripper Pro results, we can see that the overall performance is lower than the 12900K system. However, the multi-core performance is measurably higher than the 12900K system. 
it's got more cores. Do the math. This is actually really to do with the renderer only now being multi-core enabled and the overall high clock frequency of the 12900K boosting that overall performance, which means it's going to be faster, if that makes sense. We're saying all of that because the 12900K is faster per core, After Effects is kind of stuck in the stone age with its rendering engine, even though it's, it's multi-core. Any CPU with a faster single core speed will be faster than with the so-called multi-core rendering engine that they implemented last year. Now, this is telling me that I actually need a PC just for After Effects with a 12900K, well, not really, but you get the idea. Faster single cores is better for After Effects and it's always been that way and it probably always will be that way because Adobe doesn't listen to the people actually using the software, right? Lastly, we've got DaVinci Resolve now. I've got to say this from the beginning, we don't use Resolve that often and it doesn't really work with our workflow. I included this because a lot of people will ask for these metrics. With the overall performance in Resolve, the Threadripper Pro system easily outpaces both the 3970X and the 12900K system. This is because Resolve is far more optimized for multi-core CPUs than the Adobe suite of products because Adobe just doesn't listen. Now, <laughs> this result does surprise me quite a bit, however, but if we take a look at the breakdown here on the next graph, the 4K media score of the Threadripper Pro is far higher than both other systems. However, you'll notice that the Fusion score is miles ahead of both of the AMD systems. Now, this is because much like After Effects, Fusion is also a piece of compositing software that benefits quite a bit from having both multiple GPUs, which technically the iGPU is, and a higher core clock. That's just how the cookie crumbles here. The 12900K per core is a faster chip. After all that testing, it's clear that both the Threadripper Pro and the 12900K system are pretty excellent for all these tasks. Now, I think the real deciding factor with a choice between choosing one of these platforms is really price, performance, and expansion. Well, at least it is for me. For the 12900K base system, obviously the entry point is significantly lower, however, you do miss out on things like extensive multi-GPU support, although you can use multi-GPUs with something like a Threadripper Pro, you're gonna have seven slots. And also expansion, not, not just for the GPUs. Now, for all of those single core applications, the 12900K would be my pick, but since I personally have a pretty unique use case where I need multiple add-in cards for storage and capture devices, I think the Threadripper Pro system would suit my use case more. The performance uplift compared to my current system is reason enough to switch. However, after all this testing, I still haven't come to any conclusions yet. And I think I'm leaning towards the Threadripper Pro system, but as usual, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about what you would choose and why you would choose a certain system and just let me know why you would choose something and if it suits your use case. For me, I think it's gonna be Threadripper Pro, but I'm still not sure. And yeah, that's basically it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of drag race video. I was really excited to make this because we can talk about all this stuff until the cows come home, but unless we have some solid metrics to go off, it's just gonna help us better understand where the strengths and weaknesses are of each platform. So I hope this helped guide you if this is something that you're interested in doing. And if it's not, hopefully it was kind of educational. And if you're wanting to get into this and like you starting out to be an editor, hopefully this video will help you get an idea of what works best for where. Or if you're a seasoned professional who works in the industry, maybe this video will help you level up your workflow. And that's just about gonna do it. If you guys like these videos and this type of video, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications and all that jazz. And if you hated this video, the dislike button doesn't work anymore. So tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And we haven't done a video quite like this before. And to be honest, I was really excited to know which one was gonna be more potent for my workflow. The truth is both platforms have their strengths, but I'm leaning a little bit more towards Threadripper Pro because Threadripper Pro 5000, if I can get a chip, I think it's gonna be even faster. And you can go through the Puget Bench results 
and take a bit of a look at what people are already getting with Threadripper Pro 5000 and it's looking pretty fantastic. Thanks for watching.